Well, some weather is uh, is very favorable uh, as things currently stand uh, to Bitcoin is El Salvador, somewhere you mentioned earlier that you guys traveled to. And it's where um, I met both of you as well in person, finally, um, after years of, you know, a, a few talks on, online. Um, what was your... What was your overall feeling and experience like being in El Salvador? Because obviously for me, it was kind of very different and kind of overwhelming a little bit. But how did you guys find it? Like, did you enjoy it? Did you what did you find when you were talking to people about, you know, uh, accepting actual Bitcoin and uh, talking to just general people like taxi drivers, etc.? Like, how did you find the experience and, and what did you think the people felt in El Salvador? We felt amazing because even the legal tender started running in september we went in november we met in november 2021 and we thought that it was a lot easier to use bitcoin and then in brazil for example uh, the citizens are really curious they are trying to know how to make it happen how to use bitcoin and how to negotiate how to transact wallet to wallet and but it was pretty nice to, to see that citizens are open. The drivers, the hotels wanted to learn about how to accept Bitcoin in their business. And uh, we thought this, is, this was the best part because people, citizens were open and business were migrating to El Salvador. We talked to um, exchange owners that are Brazilians that were were in El Salvador when we went there and they were talking about ah, maybe let's migrate to El Salvador, let's open our company over there. And maybe this was uh, a curious part because we are seeing in real life people talking about migrate to El Salvador and how much it could improve the, um, the growth of the country. And for us, it was amazing. We want to come back there maybe in next year or another to see how the evolution went because they were really open and here in brazil people are open but not that much but the legal tender brought uh the the, the discussion about bitcoin to the mainstream to normal citizens that are not bitcoiners are not voted um to to Bitcoin community or to technological development. So it was pretty amazing. And we hope it, it, it grow even more. They are launching Bitcoin bonds right now. Let's see how it will grow. And Lawrence, uh, what, what did you felt? Did you try to use Bitcoin over El Salvador? And did you try to use Bitcoin here in Brazil? What was the main difference for you? What did you felt as well? Yeah, so I, I I kind of had the sim a similar experience to you with regards to like people being curious and like generally excited about it. Um, and uh, so yeah, I, I found that quite encouraging. And yeah, when it comes to the experience of using it, so in El Salvador, I didn't. I took a a credit card, but um, I didn't use it uh, from memory, um, and I didn't take any cash, no no dollars at all um so i literally just had my like had two lightning wallets i had like moon wallet and blue wallet and that was it so basically if they didn't accept bitcoin pff, i was screwed um but generally i was with like i was always with people because we went as a team a very full team so uh there was a few times where they didn't accept bitcoin and like someone would just pay for like three of us with with dollars if we had to um and then i would then pay them back with lightning because uh, everyone's happy to spend dollars and get bitcoin um even even a bit refill you know if you can get some more bitcoin great so um yeah my but my experience generally was that like most places so especially when you went to like bitcoin beach or even el tunco or um like the kind of more established like okay this is a place so like the, the you know, certain areas of the capital el tunco bitcoin beach that generally bitcoin was accepted pretty much everywhere um and it generally worked great unless they were using chivo wallet and then it worked terribly mm -hmm. <laughs> which i think was everyone's experience at the time uh, i don't know about now but at the time um but i did use chivo uh in uh, where was it i went to denny's first time i've ever been there and all the us people listening uh, know what denny's is um so i went there and uh, spent with bitcoin and uh, it didn't actually pick up the transaction um and it turns out this was like a whole problem but like the lady working just didn't care. So she was like, yeah, whatever. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I just left. <laughs> so I didn't have to pay twice, um, but it did go through in the end. It's just that, you know, it didn't show on their, on, on their phone. 
Um, but then, yeah, Brazil, um, I, yeah, I have used Bitcoin, uh, a few times here, uh, once was like, uh, with like a lawyer. So it wasn't really like a, in the store kind of thing. Um, but the time I did use it in a store was back in, yeah. Um, I think it was like April, May, 2020. So during the pandemic, um, and I was in the North of the Island of Florianopolis. And there was like an Italian restaurant that we walked past and they had like a Bitcoin accepted here sign. We were like, oh, shit. It's like my, my, my friends and I like uh, all went back there for lunch. Uh, and yeah, the owner was there and he was like super excited because I think no one had uh, tried to pay with Bitcoin for like two years, um, but they had in the past. And I was like, oh, OK, so then we yeah, we went through it. He re-downloaded his Bitcoin wallet because I think he'd like uh he's basically given up on thinking people were going to send it to him and he had like a hardware wallet back at home and uh yeah it, it worked it was like high fee uh slow bit, <laughs> standard bitcoin transaction what's one of those situations where it's not like an advertisement for for using bitcoin um but it worked and uh, it was cool but i i don't really come across uh people accepting bitcoin that much in in brazil um well definitely not compared to el salvador so yeah, that's my kind of experience. But people are always willing to take free crypto uh, here, like um, like they are anywhere. But um, I've given away lots of uh, shit coins and, and and some Bitcoin as well to people over my time in Brazil, and and they usually get really happy when like a year later it's worth like you know <laughs> whatever times the amount. <laughs> so that's my experience. yeah. He, he, uh, uh... There's no place use accepting through Lightning. Most are on-chain transactions. That's our main challenge around here in Brazil is to, to make merchants know about Lightning and how it would facilitate the transactions with, with Bitcoin. That, for me, this is the biggest difference between El Salvador and Brazil because here Lightning is not that common. All, all right, everybody heard about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, but Lightning is not something uh, that uh, Brazilians heard of. So I think that's our main challenge for the next years, trying to make everyone use Bitcoin through Lightning and heard about this kind of transactions. Because like you said, when we go to a merchant like Florianopolis or Porto Alegre, when we go, went there, the employees don't have the wallet, don't know how to use it, or they, they deleted it. And okay, the sign is there, but no one is accepting anymore. So this is the, the main challenge for us to keep merchants accepting and how to use it through Lightning as well. Uh, what part of Brazil is like the most crypto friendly? Well, I would say Florianopolis because I went there, but I know there's a Jericoacoara beach where they are trying to implement something like El Salvador, uh, El Zonte, where a group of Bitcoiners started to teach the merchants over. It's a tourist beach in Brazil, Jericoacoara, it's uh, touristic. And a group of Bitcoiners started to help uh, merchants to accept true lightning. So this is a place we want to go to visit and see how it's working over there, how is uh, the usability, how merchants are accepting, it's easy for them or not. But I would say these two places, Florianopolis and Jericoacoara Beach. We hope that other places start to, to grow. But here in Porto Alegre, there's a lot of places accepting, but also on-chain. Most of them are accepting on-chain. And if I would say true lighting would be uh, Jericoacoara. Yeah, I um, I remember speaking to the guy at Jericho. I can never say that damn name of the place. Jericho, Jericho. I can never say it. I remember speaking to him back when he's like kind of. I think he came onto one of my spaces, and it was really early days and in, in this in the project. Um, uh, and uh, we chatted on Telegram a little bit, and I offered to help. But um, it's really interesting what he's what what's going on there. Like the it's it's cool that they're trying to do like a Brazilian version of Bitcoin Beach. Um, and uh. If anyone is listening to this who's interested, like go check it out. Uh, I, th I think the tag is something like Bitcoin Beach BR or something. I, I might be wrong, but if you type it in on Google or Twitter, you'll find it. Um, and yeah, it's a really cool idea and project. So if you want to support that, then there's ways that you can. Um, and yeah, what you said about Floripa as well, uh, the meetups I've been to are, are pretty impressive. Like there's a lot of uh, gringos and a lot of like local Brazilians as well. Um, who kind of come and, and you get 40, 50 people like each one and they happen like twice a week and, you know, they're different places in, in the island. So Florianopolis has got a lot of buzz. Um, but as you say, Lightning, not really, um, not really utilized much uh, from my experience in Brazil. And, and that's kind of how I um, got most acquainted with Refill really actually myself, like because I had used Refill in like 2019, I think it was. 
um when i was just on like exploring what the hell lightning even is like i'd never even heard of it and a friend of mine sent me some some lightning and then um yeah but being brazil i actually used it a ton like when i first came for like iFood and uh uber eats and just things like that because and and using uber because like i i <laughs> i think at the time like my, my debit card charged like really expensive fees to use it abroad and all this stuff um so that's why i then ended up working uh, with bit refill because i was like well this is really cool like it's actually helping me a ton in brazil um so i found uh, that was a useful service because of that i guess you said like one of the challenges is getting people to accept lightning uh when it comes to teaching people about uh bitcoin and crypto there's not tons of content out there in portuguese like there's probably more in spanish and a lot more in english obviously um, but not low, from my experience, probably only, you know, a small percentage of the population here in Brazil speaks English. Um, I would say, uh, although a lot of people have a good basic knowledge. Um, so what, what, what is like the best, uh, what, what are the biggest challenges for you when it comes to actually educating people? Uh, and what would you say like the best kind of places to, to find good Portuguese language content, obviously as yourselves um but like um, uh, as well as that i would say that uh, the biggest challenge was before the pandemic something really simple that is how to use qr codes that's about uh, digital education so that's the um, the perception of the need that we have about uh because uh, crypto and bitcoin both of the content is in english so this is a barrier for brazilians uh, uh the majority of the Brazilians don't understand English. So, and digital education, like how to use a QR code. But with the pandemic, unfortunately, we started to use a lot of QR codes in restaurants to menus and in advertisements on the on the TV. So uh, Brazilians are more um, used right now to some digital uh, use like uh, QR codes and how to make digital payments. That was a challenge before the pandemic. Now it's more common around here. And uh, for me, the biggest challenge is to make Brazilians see Bitcoin not just through price, but to the changes that it provides and how people can be sovereign with their finance, with their um, with their money, and how to really uh, don't fall into scams. There are a lot of scams here in Brazil and it's hard to differentiate what is a scam and what is not. So this would be the basic challenge. There are a lot of challenges, but this would be the first ones. I guess Twitter here in Brazil is really strong. There are a lot of Bitcoiners over there. I think that would be a good place to start. There are our channel, Use Crypto. There are uh, Fernando Urich here in Brazil as well, Bitcoineros that talk about Bitcoin and um, teach other Brazilians. And I would say, Lawrence, you talked before about Bitperfil and Bitperfil saved me a lot of times. We were in San Francisco trying to use Bitcoin and we uh, search on the internet how, Bit, uh, how uh, San Francisco would accept, which merchants would accept Bitcoin. And I, on the search on the YouTube, on the Google, said uh, San Francisco is the best place to use cryptocurrency. There's a lot of places accepting, like a lot of places uh, tagged in the Google Maps, and we uh, registered all of them in our search. When we went there, none of them accepted. And Bitrefill saved us with Uber, with uh, gift cards, because if it wasn't for Bitrefill, we wouldn't. Uh, have how to survive in San Francisco because we just uh, went with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in our wallets. So that's that's the big difference between what is on internet and what is in real life. So it's good that we have this tool to to use and how to to go to other places and to spend Bitcoin on other cryptocurrencies because not always what is in in internet is what we represents in real life. So that's a, a good story about how how to check first before you spend, before you go to the places. So I guess that's it. There's a lot of content right now. People can search for us, can search for Twitter, uh, Bitcoineros, Fernando Urich, a lot of content over there. A while back, like probably like a year or two ago, I remember hearing a lot of fanfare about the Brazilian government's digital payment system, PIX. 
Is that still yeah. a thing? Do people use it? Yes, people use it a lot. Uh, this was one of the things that helped, uh, ironically, to teach Brazilians about how a digital payment works, because it's pretty much like a, a Bitcoin transactions. There's a, there are QR code and there's a key that you can use your cell phone or an email or just a, 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 key, a key. So it helped us, uh, helped us to e explain to Brazilians how a Bitcoin payment works. In the beginning, we were really angry about Pix because they were competing with like uh, cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin kind of payment. But it's it's really a thing. It got uh, traction really fast between Brazilians because it's fast and anyone can can use between the banks because uh, the, the central bank forced us forced the big banks to use it. So when the big banks have this system, all most of the Brazilians started to to adopt it, and it's it's happening. Brazilians are using just like credit cards, the, the same proportion of uh, adoption. But here in Brazil as well, with the credit cards have some facilities where uh, Brazilians can parcelate. They can pay some something in a small portions through time. So Brazilians are kind of addicted to the credit cards because of this kind of payments. They um, don't have the money right now, so they parcelate the, the debt and it's a re really common use and PIX will make it as well. Brazilian Central Bank will facilitate this for sealing the, the, the value of the debt. I know like in El Salvador that there's a high percentage of the people that don't have access to the financial system. They don't have bank accounts. They don't have credit cards. Is Brazil um, banked or are they mostly unbanked, the citizens? Pretty much banked, like 70% or more of the population is banked. It's like the opposite of El Salvador. Here, our, um, our banking system, it's really uh, pretty strong. It's one of the strongest in the world. So ev everyone has a, a bank account. That's why PIX uh, got adopted pretty fast compared to other, other uh, bank innovations. So yeah, it's, it's trying to it would be hard to compete, but here banks are adopting Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. We were one of the first countries in the world to have like an ETF, our um, uh, B3, our stock, big stock exchange is, uh, will tokenize assets. So they are trying to, to bring crypto innovations through the fiat system. Yeah, I gotta say, Pix is pretty good. Like <laughs> using it, it's, <laughs> it's saved my skin because my uh, card, like sometimes on some terminals here, doesn't work for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. And so then, like, I'm sat there with groceries already, and I'm like, shit. And so then I've like used Pix through PicPay, and I'm like, and it's just like instant. And to be fair, it's great, but it's no better than Lightning, um, to yeah. be honest. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to like a uh, user experience in store, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. And if anything, when I describe Bitcoin and then lightning to people who are here, they're like, Oh, like, it's like picks. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. okay. It is. Yeah. But, but like, you don't need to rely on like a central like authority. They're like, Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it's generally good to explain to people. Okay.